Welcome to Alcade, and today we're talking about controllers. So uh, today we're going to be talking about all controllers, their compatibilities, uh, where they work best, etc. Uh, and today we're going to be using the 64-bit system for testing. Uh, there's nothing stopping you from using any of the other systems as well. All of these controllers will work, although we don't technically support uh, future compatibility. So like as an example, 64-bit games, we don't guarantee you're going to work well on an 8-bit system as they don't have a heatsink, let alone active cooling. Um, but the controllers will still plug in, and if you want to force it to play, you can. So today we're going to talk about compatibility, how to make things work. Etc. So we're going to start with 64 bit system, a brand new fresh one. Um, so if you just got a system yourself, it's going to look and act just like this. Uh, let's plug it in and get it going. So power and HDMI, and power it on. So I'm going to switch over to the screen so that we can see what it's doing and what's going on. And so right now it is a fresh system. So we only have the one uh, game in there, which of course is the one that we ship with it. Um, so let's fix that right now. So what I'm going to do is switch over to my computer here. I've got uh, a few of my uh, favorite games already, already on the computer with backups. So I'm going to take a memory card, plug it in. And I'm just going to take a sampling of a few different uh, systems so that we can try out their controllers. So we will grab Super Mario 3 for NES. Uh, Super Mario World for Super uh, Super Nintendo. Uh, we're going to grab a Sega game, Sega Genesis game, and Super Smash Bros. And we'll bring those guys over. Just copy them on a memory card. It's asking if I want to copy over permissions, etc. The answer is yes. And just like so, it is done. So just like that, we're going to close out of this, unplug it, and we'll switch back to our console. So, I'm going to plug this guy into the bottom of the system, and if you watch the red light, it should switch to purple when it recognizes the games, and then once that switches back to red, we know that the games are copied over. It happens super, super fast. Now, because this is a brand new system, this uh, platform has never seen NES or Super Nintendo games before, so it's going to do a quick restart and add those menu icons um, to the system. So let's start with 64-bit controller. And you'll see now it's restarted already. It's super quick. Um, we don't need this flash drive anymore. Um, but if I just switch over here, you can see that I have at least one game added to each one. The only one that has two, of course, is, uh, is you know, Minefield, the game that comes with the system. And of course, I don't need this memory card anymore, so I can unplug it. And let's start with an N64 game, because of course, we have uh, an N64 controller. So the mapping is automatic. So as an example, if I wanted to play a, you know, if I wanted to plug a, a NES controller in, uh, if the game only required A, B, and start, it would work with, uh, with a uh, Nintendo 64 title. Uh, obviously, the reason that you buy an N64 is because it has the analog joystick and those graphics and everything else, um, which an A button, a B button, a start and select button aren't going to do for you. So if you want to play an N64 title, you really do need the analog joystick, which means you do need the N64 controller. However, uh, if you look on, the, uh, on my controller here, obviously there is start, there is A and B, and there is a D-pad. So there's nothing stopping me from using this controller uh, to play a NES game, for example. So there's no point in me plugging in a, a NES controller and trying to play Super Smash Bros, because it's just not going to work. Um, but part of the controls is showing you, uh, one, that they, that they play well, um, which, of course, all the mapping is perfect in here. Um, so I can do you know, all the combos and everything that you would expect uh, in Super Smash Bros. No problem. Boom. Um, but... With N64, uh, to get back to the main menu, it's a little bit different. Normally, it's start and select, but there is no select on the N64 controller. So we've set it up to be start and trigger at the same time, and that'll bring you to the live menu. So if you wanted to save game states or anything like that, you would do that here. So start and trigger are the buttons you want with, with the N64 uh, platform. 
But uh, to show other controllers, let's get something else plugged in. So let's go to uh, my favorite, uh, which is NES. So as soon as I plug it in, you'll see it pop up on the bottom of the screen, basically saying that it's recognized it, it knows what it is, and that's the, the automatic button mapping happening. It's recognizing the controller and it's mapping everything for us. So now I can close out of this title and I can switch over to a nest title. So just like before where you, know, you need a, uh, uh, you know, an N64 controller in order to play N64 because that analog joystick, uh, a NES controller doesn't have enough buttons to play on any other platform. So a NES controller works brilliantly for NES games, but you couldn't really use this for anything else because you don't have the other buttons. However, every other controller has the ability to play, uh, <laughs> every other controller uh, has the ability to play NES games. So, as an example, uh, I'm going to go in here and show that actually works, and that was me screwing up, not, not the controller failing. Uh, I was watching the, uh, the live casting screen instead of, uh, instead of the live video screen, so there's a bit of a delay, and it messed me up. I know excuses, right? I obviously just don't know how to play this game. Uh, so, here we go. Uh, I'm going to unplug this live, and I'm going to plug in another controller. It doesn't matter which. Uh, let's actually go back to the uh, uh, N64 controller. So now I'm using the D-pad, and I'm using... A and B, so you got to get used to the feel a little bit because, of course, it's uh, it's a different controller, um, but it's working perfectly. And I can unplug again there and switch over to Super Nintendo. And of course, it has a B and an A as well. So once again, it plays perfectly. So live, no need for menus, no need for remapping. You just unplug one, plug in another one, and it will just work. <laughs> I missed it. Uh, so uh, the, the only real uh, difference, the only thing that isn't maybe entirely intuitive uh, is with the Sega controller. Because with all Nintendo platforms, uh, B is on the left. And with Sega platform, it goes A, B, C. So we have deliberately messed up the mapping a little bit on Sega. And that is because if you want to play a Nintendo platform, you're instinctively expecting this to be B and this to be A. So we've mapped it so that that's intuitive. So that you can use this controller and it'll still feel like you're playing a Nintendo platform. Um, if you're playing a Sega game, it automatically remaps to be correct for Sega. So to prove that, um, with Sega, once again, there's no select button. So it's going to be start and menu, which is hidden on the corner here. Brings you back to the menu. Uh, so now from here, uh, I can go back to Sega. And as soon as I load into a Sega title, see core remap loaded. You see that in the bottom left-hand corner? It's recognizing that I have a Sega controller and I'm using a Sega platform. So it's remapping yet again. Um, so this one remaps both in our arcade system and separately in Sega. And this is a new update for uh, version 4. So if you have uh, an older arcade, uh, this won't happen. There will be an update, which of course you can, you can apply, which will, which will do this for you. So in the older system, A was A, B was B, um, which is correct mapping, but makes playing these Nintendo titles difficult, if not impossible. Um, so with this new update, uh, you know, you're able to play Nintendo games natively, uh, comfortably, intuitively, uh, while also being able to go into Sega and playing those, those titles intuitively as well. I am absolutely no good at Mortal Kombat, um, so I'm just opening it up to show that it works, but I am terrible at this game. I've never been able to ace the, uh, the combos required to beat even the easiest computer, computer opponents. <laughs> and there we go lost that quickly and the only one we haven't really showed off yet so i start and start and select at the same time start in mode um on uh, on the sig controller the only one we haven't showed off is of course the super nintendo so let's hop into that now
and here we go. So um, we have, uh, like, as an example, with the uh, N64, it has more than enough more than enough buttons. Um, there's all those C buttons, the shoulder buttons, the trigger. There's all kinds of buttons that aren't used here. So we have remapped uh, the N64 controller in Super Nintendo so that the C buttons become uh, X and Y. Um, and you still have the shoulders, and then I believe uh, C up is select. Um, so you still have the ability to press all these buttons. It's j you just got to get used to it because there is no X and Y or select button uh, on the N64 controller, but it is still playable. <laughs> Ran too fast. So I'm going to plug in the N64 controller here. Maps live, just like everything else. And of course, I'm using the D-pad instead of the, uh, the analog. But here I go. So you can see I can still press the buttons that are X and Y. I can still do my sprint moves. I can still do my jump moves. Um, I'm just using the C buttons for X and Y instead of... X and Y, because there aren't any. Uh, shoulders are still shoulders, start is still start, and I believe C up is select. Um, and of course we have all those reference materials available on the website. So uh, that's this is kind of the most oddball, trying to use an N64 controller uh, to add X and Y buttons. Uh, if you were playing Super Nintendo, in, in, most, in most cases you would want to be using a Super Nintendo, Nintendo controller, um, or even the Sega ones map decently well. N64 is a bit of an oddball, because you got those tiny C buttons you're trying to repurpose. Um, and of course with N64, no matter what platform you're in, uh, start and trigger is how you get back to the menu. So uh, that is an overview of controls, controllers, mapping, and how they work. Uh, we will have an advanced tutorial showing you how to do remapping uh, in the event that you want to be running platforms that aren't officially supported. So any, uh, uh, any Nintendo, uh, like uh, the 16-bit, 8-bit, and 64-bit Nintendo platforms um, will all natively work. Um, as well as uh, Sega, of course. There are a lot of you know, Game Boy uh, systems that are directly compatible and do auto map, um, but if you want to get into you know, the, the territory of um, uh, PlayStation games that require multiple analogs, multiple analog joysticks, things like that, uh, we do not produce a controller uh, for, for, the, for that kind of market. Um, so that's the kind of thing where you can do it, the system will do it, you can plug in uh, a DualShock controller and it will recognize it and it will attempt to auto map, um, but we can't guarantee perfect mapping um, because of course we don't uh, produce the controllers. So we don't know how they're made, we don't know how they're going to work. Um, but all of our platforms, all of our supported stuff works natively and we'll have an advanced video showing you how to kind of push the limits if you want to expand into those other platforms that aren't officially supported. So um, thank you for taking the time to watch. I hope you've learned a little bit about how the system works and what effort we've put in to make it work well. Uh, that's all I got for today, and uh, we'll, we'll see you next time in another video.